Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing my bookshelf tour with you all, finally. I know you guys have been asking for this and I haven't had a chance to do it until today, so that was all I did today. Today was project bookshelf tour and I spent the entire day filming and editing, so I know that it seems like it's long, I know it is long, but I tried my hardest to edit it down for you all, so hopefully you'll enjoy it and it will move pretty quickly for you, so um, I hope you guys like it. And if anybody is wondering, because I feel like somebody might ask, I do currently have 147 books on the shelves in the tour and I think that's everything that I have. Um, I don't have any like books sitting around my room or around the house or anything so I'm pretty sure this should be the most current the most updated as of January 15th of 2014 so I hope you guys enjoy thanks so much for watching and I will see you all later bye okay guys so I'm gonna start with a little overview of my bookshelf so basically what my setup is right now is these two pieces of furniture and these go with my bed and my dresser type of furniture so it matches I've had these pieces for forever since I was a kid so the first piece here on the left is the one that I use to position most of my kind of I guess favorite books if you will but what I used to do was at my old house I had this one separate from this piece and I had this more as like a piece for decorated like little trinkets and things. I used to just use it for like pictures and stuff. And then the bottom half is actually a dresser. So I use that still for clothes because um, I think it'd be weird to put books in there. Um, although I would be pulling out some like Rory Gilmore moments if you guys watch that. Um, and then this one, this piece over here actually went to a desk that I used to have. And it is a bookshelf. It's more of like a makeshelf bookshelf because the bottom piece of it is actually a little bit deeper than this one over here um, because it was part of a desk. So I got rid of the desk. I didn't really use it um, and I really didn't need it here because I'm no longer living here and um, like full time. And when I did live at home, like when I was in high school and stuff, I never used my desk for homework. So I got rid of that but I have those two top shelves that I'm using and then I did get a TV when we moved here this was my sister's TV from her college apartment so I kind of just took that and we put it in our rooms because we all got DVRs and stuff so I record everything that I miss while I'm at school and um, then on the bottom I used these two shelves to start with I used those as more like storage for my makeup and just extra things but recently I added some books on that bottom shelf because I am pretty much out of space now so I'm gonna have to get a new bookshelf sometime this year and I'll show you guys right here I apologize for not shutting the door um, but right here I have some space this was where I had my Christmas tree that you saw in some of my videos but um, I have I think enough room to put another bookshelf there so um, I'm probably going to try to do that or at least get a small one to do because I'm like pretty much out of room. Um, and then right now I just have like my Xbox down there. So that's kind of an overview. And then on top real quickly before I take you guys closer, I have a couple little random things. So up there I have this doll. She's a redhead doll so she looks like me. And I've had this doll since I was I think like five and I used to get so scared of her because she has green eyes and I used to think that she was like staring at me in my sleep and that she was evil. So when I was little, I had to stick her in the closet because she used to terrify me. And then I have this little bear. I just got this like a couple months ago. This is a Dennis Basso teddy bear um, that we got in at my dad's store. On the wall up here, I have a little light up flower, which I will take you guys in and show you really quickly. So this is like a little light up um, flower. I want to get a new bedspread that kind of has like a purple looking um, flower look to it and I've always had purple decor and stuff. I love purple. So this one lights up like that. It's really cute and I guess I could leave that lit up for the video. Okay so starting with the top shelf this is where I keep most of what I call like my vampire series and vampire books. I think all of the ones that I have I have up here. So before I show the books, I have a couple little random things up here. So I have this little picture of me. I think it was five or six when this was taken. Um, I had like a major sunburn there, if you can see underneath my eyes. It looks like I was like bawling, but I had major sunburn. So that's from where that picture's from. Then I have just a body butter hand lotion thing that I stuck up there. Starting over here, this is like the Stephanie Meyer collection because I have the entire Twilight series. And then I just got the host from Books A Million in my last book haul for like six dollars or something crazy so I don't know if I can get it out I have to take some of these out first so I guess I'll show you Twilight first I'm gonna try to quickly show the covers on some of these because I know you all have seen them so I have Twilight 
and I have to pull these out to show the host. So I have Twilight, I have New Moon, I have Eclipse, and then I have Breaking Dawn, and I have all three of those in hardcover, but I need to get the first one in hardcover just to have it on the shelf. And then I have The Host, which I did just get, and I have not read it yet, um, but I did want to put it with the other books by her. Next I have the Vampire Academy series, which I love, and all of these are a different color, which you cannot really tell. The lighting in here is not the greatest. I have Vampire Academy, which is the first one. I have Frostbite, Shadow Kiss, there's Blood Promise, Spirit Bound, and then Last Sacrifice. And if you all have not read this series, you definitely need to because it is absolutely amazing and I cannot get enough of it. The Blue Bloods series. So I have Blue Bloods, and this is all by Melissa De La Cruz. I have Blue Bloods, which is the first one. Masquerade is the second one. I have Revelations, the third one. The Van Allen Legacy, or the Van Allen Legacy. And then the last one that I have is Misguided Angel. And I'm not for sure that this is the next book in the series, but I did get this one for $4 in a shop. I did show this actually in, I think, my first book haul ever. Um, I have this book. And I'm not sure, like I said, if it's the next one in the series, but I haven't really kept up with these recently. I've read all of the first four, but after that I haven't continued. I have the House of Night series by PC and Kristen Cast, which I have to say wasn't my favorite. I know a lot of people love these, and I've only read the first one and then the first half of Betrayed, so I do have Marked, which is the first one, and then the second one is Betrayed, but I just haven't been that into them. I definitely recommend Vampire Academy more than those. And then really quickly to show you guys this, I have another little random item. This is a flash drive, and this is cool because my best friend Eliza actually gave this to me for my birthday, I think the year before last, and it's just a flash drive, and then she put on it this little cupcake kind of charm keychain thing. I'm not sure where she got this, um, but it is super cute and adorable, and I love this because on the flash drive she actually put a bunch of pictures of us from like years and years back. I have known her since middle school, so she has pictures of us all throughout the years, and then she put a lot of really cool albums on there for me, so that is really cool, and I keep that up there because it has some good stuff. So next I have the Delirium Trilogy by Lauren Oliver. Um, so that is Delirium. Then I have Pandemonium. And then I have Requiem, which is the last one. The last thing I have on the shelf is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. I only have the first one right now because this is on my list to read because I haven't read all of it, but I need to get the next two. Everything back on it, that is what that shelf looks like. This is my next shelf, so I give you guys a little overview of this one, which is probably my favorite shelf, just because I have my most recent favorite books on this, and I have my favorite series, and more of like the contemporary books that I have. Uh, there could be some others that are just random that aren't necessarily belong. Like, I would consider the selection more of like a historical fiction, even though it is like not really a real place. It's kind of like a dystopian historical fiction. The book I have is Speak by Laurie Hulse Anderson of The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. This is a fabulous book if you've never read it. It is so good. Next one I have is one of my all-time favorite books of all time and that is 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. I absolutely love this book. It's one of the best books I've ever read. And if you haven't read it, I think you definitely should. I have The Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight, and this is by Jennifer E. Smith. Here I had The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky, hands down my favorite book of all time. That and 13 Reasons Why are two of my all-time favorites. So again, if you haven't read this one, I highly recommend it. The Fault in Our Stars by John Green, Looking for Alaska, also by John Green. Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi. We have The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Eleanor and Park right here, which I do have a review on. I have a review on a lot of these books, so if you guys are interested in those. Fangirl, which I loved. Definitely my favorite out of the two, if you ask me. Selection series, or the first two in the trilogy by Kira Cass. So I have The Selection, which I cannot get over how gorgeous these covers are. So the Selection, and then I have The Elite, which is the second one. Anna in the French Kiss. Get it out of there. 
love this book too and i have lola and the boy next door they're both by stephanie perkins the fifth wave by rick yancey now we're on to harry potter because harry potter is my favorite thing in the entire world and i do have this little piggy bank here that i've got some change in it's called girls night out i've had this thing for forever um love it I have my entire hardcover collection of harry potter over here i'm not going to pull these out because you guys have probably seen them so i have harry potter and the sorcerer's stone chamber of secrets prisoner of azkaban goblet of fire order of the phoenix um the half blood prince and then the deathly hallows so i love those into the third shelf and this is what i would consider like a random section because i have a lot of these books that i consider like I guess these are just like more popular ones now that I just have. Um, but then over here I have a lot of like author kind of oriented books or books that are written by authors or about certain people. Um, about like their life or something like that. They're more like non um, like storyline based books. And then I start my kind of section of summery girly beach reads which continues way up there. So to get started with this. First and foremost, on this top shelf, I have um, Pretties by Scott Westerfeld, which is one of the Uglies books. I do not have any of the others yet, but when I get around to reading this one day, I have this one. Starting with this shelf, I'm going to have to start with The Darkest Minds and then work my way backwards because it's impossible to get these out behind the camera because the shelf is packed tight. So, if I can do this... The first one that I'm going to show is The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken, which I am currently reading, so I'm just going to pull that out and leave that out since I'm reading that, and that'll make it a little bit easier on me. So, now I have, as the first one, I have The Diviners by Libba Bray. I have Scarlet in the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. This is the second one. Beautiful Darkness, which look at this. Okay, you guys, this kills me. So I showed this in my book haul, my last book haul, if you didn't watch, um, the Books a Million sale one. I got this for like $5 hardcover. And so I'm peeling the sticker off and this is there. Like this did not happen while I was peeling the sticker off. This was already there and it was covered up with the sticker which is probably partially why it was $5, but there were like a stack of them. And so I was back there the other day and I was looking to see if the other ones had that. And none of the other ones had this, but I don't think that they take books back and I didn't want to be a problem. So I got this like random messed up book. Like look at that, you can like see through it. It's like a mirror. Frost by Mariana Bear, which I showed in my haul. Bright Young Things by Anna Godberson. A couple of new adult books right here. I only have three right now, but I do have Beautiful Disaster by Jamie McGuire, which was really good. I also have Easy by Tamara Weber, which is my favorite new adult book that I've read so far. This is so good, it was so addicting, and it's definitely my favorite that I've read so far. And then I also have Losing It by Cora Carmack. Seriously, I'm Kidding by Ellen DeGeneres, which I read over the summer. It's a pretty good, funny book. Of All Things at Once by Mika Brzezinski, which is probably really strange that I have this. If you guys don't know who she is, she's a talk show host on The Morning Joe, which is a TV talk show. And I actually got to meet her um, my sophomore year of high school. No, my junior year of high school. But she signs it. She put Have All Things at Once to Kristen. That's the only signed book that I have. Play Candy by Lauren Conrad, which I guess is a lie. I told you guys these were books that were not... Um, stories but I meant more like they're written by celebrity people or people that we like know about in like real life before they wrote a book. So Bosworth's um, The Lowdown. Kate Middleton book. Um, it's called Kate. Kate Middleton Princess in Waiting by Claudia Joseph. On Fifth Avenue by um, Candace Bushnell who is the author of the Sex and the City kind of phenomenon and the series of books and the Carrie Diaries and all of that. So this section over here is the beginning of like the summary kind of beach read type of books that I have and those kind of further extend on the next shelf so starting right here this is peaches by jody lynn anderson this is a really cute book it's actually a trilogy i believe shoe addicts anonymous by beth harberson the summer of skinny dipping which is by amanda howells second chance summer by morgan Matson. the first two books in the jenny han series the summer i turned pretty series which i actually own on my phone under iBooks. I read these a while back and then I found the actual copies of the books at the Books a Million sale where they were like three dollars or something really cheap. So I have The Summer I Turned Pretty, which is the first one. 
then I also have It's Not Summer Without You. Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants series. Now, I don't have the first one of this, but I do have two copies of the second book, which is The Second Summer of the Sisterhood. The third one, which is actually out of order, this is the third one, which is called Girls in Pants, The Third Summer of the Sisterhood, and all of these are by Ann Brash Hairs. If you guys never read these as a kid, these were really good books. I loved these in middle school and elementary school, and I still love them today. And then the final one is forever in blue which is the fourth summer in the sisterhood or of the sisterhood this is the final book that she did for the series that's more of like a I feel like closing off book it's more like an adult book because it was supposed to be following the girls when they were older but this one is sisterhood everlasting move on to these and this might be a little bit trickier because these are kind of double stacked so first and foremost, I'll just show you guys what I have up there. That clear little dome thing is actually an award from school that I got my senior year of high school. So I'm just gonna pull that off because that's kind of irrelevant. Um, and then I have a little candle here that is from Target that my sister got me a while back. It's purple and it's really cute. For this first half, I'm gonna show you guys what I have, but I'm going to not take them down on this side because there is like they're like stacked and that would be like impossible to show you all of them so on the very bottom the first one's kind of cut off which I apologize for but I literally cannot reach any further or my camera will not work at the moment because I need it to charge so the first one I have is Pretty Little Liars I have the box set of the first four here so I have Pretty Little Liars flawless perfect and unbelievable next I have some of the Gossip Girl series books um, I always enjoyed these, and I have Gossip Girl, the first one, You Know You Love Me, All I Want Is Everything, I Like It Like That, You're the One That I Want, Nobody Does It Better, and Nothing Can Keep Us Together. Here, I have the first three books in the South Beach series by Amy Friedman, which I always really enjoyed. The first one, which is South Beach by Amy Friedman, this one is French Kiss, and the series was Hollywood Hills. And I always liked these because they all take place in different fun locations, like the girls are vacationing, so those were really good. Next two I have are Summer Boys and Next Summer, both by Haley Abbott, which this has, I think, five or six books in the series now, but there's the first one, which is Summer Boys, and then the second one is Next Summer, and I always thought I was, like, really scandalous reading these because they're like on the beach and they were like you know a little bit more scandalous than some of the other books that I read as a little middle schooler so right here I have all of the click books um, I don't have every single one but I have the first what is that nine I have the click best friends for never revenge of the wannabes invasion of the boy snatchers the Pretty Committee Strikes Back, Dial L for Loser, It's Not Easy Being Mean, Sealed with a Disc, and Brat Fest at Tiffany's. And I always thought that the covers of these were really interesting and really cool, um, like that. Right here are all of the books in the Au Pairs series by Melissa De La Cruz. I loved these when I was younger, again. And these are some really good summery beach reads. If you have not read them, I would highly recommend them because I've read them multiple times, and I think that if I read them now, I would still really enjoy them. So they've since changed the covers and the names. They're now called the Beach Lane series. And I think the first one's called Beach Lane, but then the rest have the same names, like um, the Skinny Dipping, Sun Kissed, and Crazy Hot. The Au Pairs. One is Skinny Dipping. Third one is Sun Kissed. Fourth one is Crazy Hot. So on this side, I have a little bit of a mixture. So on the very top shelf, I have my duplicate copies of Harry Potter. So I have my paperback cover of The Chamber of Secrets and then my paperback of The Goblet of Fire. Well, here I have the A-list series, which again, I don't think I have all of them because I kind of read for a while and then I just didn't keep up with it. So if you guys can see, there's the A-list, Girls on Film, Blonde Ambition, Tall Cool One, Back in Black, Some Like It Hot, American Beauty, Heart of Glass. So I have the first, what is that, um, eight. So I really like these. I'll show you some of the covers. I'm trying to save a little bit of time, but I like these because they're set in California and I definitely have always been a fan of that. This one, which is the It Girl by Cecily Von Zeig. Zeiger, Zeigzer, who wrote all the Gossip Girl books over there. This is a series as well. Um, I only have the first one, but there are a couple of different books in that series. In this corner, 
I have my Meg Cabot or Meg Cabot series or books. So I have Haunted, Princess in Love. I have All American Girl, which is my favorite. I love this book. And then this one squeezed over here is Ready or Not, which is the sequel to All American Girl. So that's all for this first shelf over here. Now the second shelf here is a little bit different. This has more... Um, non-book related things on it. There are a couple of books on here, but this for the most part is my um, TV series collection and like random books that I have. So I will show you guys some of these little random things I have on here. First thing I have on here is this calendar. This is a some e-card calendar and this is from 2013 and I actually have this because I bought this for my sister for Christmas and one of her roommates last year bought it for her as well so then I was just stuck with it. So I have that. I have a picture of my sister and I. This is when we went to Vegas a few years ago. I went to Las Vegas with my family. So we are in front of, um, I think that that's the Mirage. I think we're in front of the Mirage there um, hotel. Here I have a little candle. This is a colonial candle. My dad used to sell these at his home decor stores years back. This is in the, the Fragrance Island Pineapple. I know you guys care about this, but... This candle smells literally like so delicious. It's like a pina colada in a jar. I have this little bear that I've had for forever and it's supposed to be like my birthstone um, except it looks more like a ruby because my birthstone is garnet actually. My birthday is January 29th so it's coming up. This next thing I have is pretty special to me and this is a box that I was given for my birthday um, a couple years ago. I think I was still in middle school and it has my name on it and this is actually really sentimental now because my friend Shelly from middle school, um, I was really close with her. She was one of my best friends in middle school. She gave this to me one year for my birthday and I remember she made me some jewelry and stuff that she put in it. I just kept the box because I really liked it and I thought it was really pretty and actually a couple months ago my friend Shelly actually passed away and so I'm really glad that I still have that because it reminds me of her and it was a really sad kind of hard thing to deal with but um, I still have that so that's kind of special and that means a lot to me. These three things right here are all my old agenda planners. I have um, the Lily Pulitzer planners that I use for school every year so I've kept the ones from the last three years that I've had so they just look like this. They're just really cute um, little planners and I love to keep them because they have um, really cute prints, which makes me like a pack rat. I have all of my TV series collections, um, or most of them. I don't know if I'm missing any or not, but I have most of my favorites. I keep them all here. So what I have first are the first two seasons of the OC. I really need to get the third and the fourth, but I like the first two the best. So there's the first one. Oh, that's not in frame. There's the first one. It's just the complete first season. Second one, the complete second season. And if you all have never watched these, they are so good. They are like one of the best shows ever. The first five seasons of Gossip Girl right here on DVD. So I have the first season, second season, the third season, fourth season, which is backwards. Oh wait, yeah, this is the fourth. I've never opened this one yet. And then I have the fifth one, which I have also not opened yet. So I think I have every single one but the sixth. I think there were six seasons. So I need to go back and through and rewatch that and finish up the entire series because Gossip Girl is, again, one of the best, in my opinion. Now I have Pretty Little Liars, the first season. And I also have the second season of Pretty Little Liars, which I think now the third season's out too, but I usually wait because if you guys go to Target, usually you can find all of these series for like $10 to $15 each versus like the $40 that they normally want. So first two seasons of The Vampire Diaries. So I have the first season there, and then I have the second season. The first season of Heroes right here, which I have on backwards. Um, I've watched the first couple episodes of this which was really good but it kind of freaked me out like this show is pretty scary a couple movies these are just some of my all-time favorite ones that I keep in here um, so I have pretty in pink because uh, I loved 80s like it says up there then I have a couple blu-rays I have the ugly truth with Katherine Heigl and Gerard Butler this is so funny I love that I have the perks of being a wallflower which I love is I mentioned with the book over there um, this is one of my favorite movies of all time and it was excellent so I have this and then I have the Katy Perry movie um, which is fantastic as well if you guys have not seen that it is so good 
Um, so those are all the movies I have here. Just have this little Vera Bradley notebook. That was one of those free gifts with purchase like years ago. Like this is a super old print, but I just have kept it in case I need a little notebook. The first thing I have are actually the first three things I have are journals that are like empty notebooks. So this one was given to me by a special family friend a couple years ago and it has cats on it. It's like a royal blue purple with some metallic -y orange gold on it. And he knew that I loved cats, so he got me this. And this is really cool. It pops open. It's like a magnet. This one, which I don't know where I got this from, but this is like a red and black notebook. It's just cool. It says it's from Michaels. I did not buy this, though, so I don't know. I think somebody gave this to me, and I can't remember who, but I have this. Next, I have a Harry Potter one, which I've had probably since I was in like fourth or fifth grade. Um, and I don't think, oh, look at this. Here we go, you guys. So it has my name on this side. And then on this side, it says, Kristen's personal journal or journal personal. Do not read. Don't ever peek or look. Don't read Kristen journal or else, which is spelled wrong. Um, keep out. A terrible looking smiley face. Read Harry Potter books. I'm still encouraging you guys. This is from like my fourth grade self. Um, oh, here we go. This is 2003, so that was 11 years ago. Let's see, I am almost 20, so I was probably nine. I could have been eight. So here is the introducement. The introducement on the next page. I have read the Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Chamber of Secrets. 11 years ago, I was on progress with the top three books that I have read, and I also had watched the first two movies. So, good times. Harry Potter brings out the best in people. I have a Spanish dictionary from um, high school, and this is the Vox Compact Spanish and English Dictionary book, which is called Bruna Shelley's Dome by Ross King. I bought this in like sixth grade, seventh grade to do a book report on, and I absolutely hated it. I could not read this. Um, it was like so difficult for me to understand. I probably would not even enjoy it now. Painless Writing by Jeffrey Strausser. These books, blah, blah. I've never used this. Lauren Conrad Beauty and Style Books. These are great if you girls or guys are into beauty and style. So I have the beauty one, which actually just came out, I think, last year, and I got it. And then I have the style book, which is really cool as well. The final shelf that we have is this one, which just has some extra books that I probably won't read again. Some of them I might, but they're just like more of my like school reading or my childhood books. So first and foremost, the random stuff. I have two candles down here from Bath and Body Works. I have a marshmallow fireside and then a winter candy apple. So those are from last year. I haven't burned through those. Starting right here, I have all of my Nancy Drew books, which are not in really, these are in order, but I don't have all of them up to this because when I was younger, I used to rent from the library, but if they didn't have these books, I would just buy them and I kind of wish that I had like all of the Nancy Drews. Maybe I'll try to do that because I think it'd be really cool to have them if I have like a, a daughter one day, but I have the fourth one, which is The Mystery at Lilac End. I have the 12th, The Message in the Hollow Oak. The 13th, The Mystery of the Ivory Charm. The 14th, The Whispering Statue. The 15th, The Haunted Bridge. The 16th, The Clue of the Tapping Heels. The 17th, Mystery of the Brass Bound Trunk. And then the 19th, The Quest of the Missing Map. All by Carolyn Keene. I loved these as a kid. I think that part of these were why I like reading so much too. Because um, these were always really interesting for me to read. I have Little Women by, um, who wrote this? Louisa May Alcott. I had to read this as a school book, but I like to have that as a classic. This next book is not a classic, but it is one that I always liked having and this is star girl by jerry spinelli it is the secret life of bees by sue mont kid shakespeare stealer by gary blackwood i had to read this in middle school as well i actually remember really enjoying this book i have charlotte's web by eb white tangerine by edward bluer i have this one which is so good this is where the red fern grows by wilson rawls i had to read this in sixth grade and i love it it is so so good very sad book but it's a really good classic kind of reading book trumpet of the swan which again i have not read secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett, which I had to read at school. Um, this one I really enjoyed long time ago since I've read all these, but I can remember them. Pooped by Carl Hyacin. This book I have is not a book that I've read. I had to read this for my history class once. It's called A History of Women in America, and I found this book because it never 
um, went back to the school. I didn't purposely like take it, but I just have it because it was a book that we had to read and it just never made its way back. Animal Farm by George Orwell, which I had to read. And then there were None by Agatha Christie. Really good. Kind of a spooky novel. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. Giver by Lois Lowry, um, which I did read. I never remember liking it because, you know, when you're little and you don't really care about these type of books, you're not interested. But I do want to go back and reread this because I found out this year that it's actually a trilogy. And I thought that that was really interesting. So I'd like to read that again one day. Now I have Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech. This is so good, you guys. Such an amazing book. Hello Mockingbird by Harper Lee. This mythology book, which my English teacher my senior year gave me, said this is apparently a really good book about Greek mythology and stuff like that. So I haven't read it yet, but I need to do that one day because that looks really interesting. And the final book on my shelf is Roll Up Thunder, Hear My Cry by Mildred D. Taylor. Okay, guys, so that is an overview of my bookshelf and everything on it that is book-related and some of the even non-rain-related uh, stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and thank you so much for watching. I'm hoping to get a new bookshelf soon, so if I do and I rearrange it and as the year goes on and I acquire some new books and things, I'm sure that I will do an updated tour. So be sure to let me know below if you'd like to see another one in the future and whether you liked this or not and thanks so much for watching so i hope you guys have a great day and i'll talk to you in my next video bye guys <laughs>